A Foley catheter is a thin, sterile tube inserted into the bladder to drain urine. Because it can be left in place in the bladder for a period of time, it is also called an indwelling catheter. It is held in place with a balloon at the end, which is filled with sterile water to prevent the catheter from being removed from the bladder. The urine drains through the catheter tube into a bag, which is emptied when full. The procedure to insert a catheter is called catheterization. The urinary bladder is a muscular sac in the pelvis, just above and behind the pubic bone. When empty, the bladder is about the size and shape of a pear. Urine is made in the kidneys and travels down two tubes called ureters to the bladder. The bladder stores urine, allowing urination to be infrequent and controlled. The bladder is lined by layers of muscle tissue that stretch to hold urine. The normal capacity of the bladder is 400 to 600 milliliters. During urination, the bladder muscles squeeze and two sphincter valves open to allow urine to flow out. Urine exits the bladder into the urethra, which carries urine out of the body. Because it passes through the penis, the urethra is longer in men, about 8 inches, than it is in women, which is about 1.5 inches. Organized urine sediment within the bladder can consist of biological elements such as leukocytes, erythrocytes, epithelial cells, casts, bacteria, fungi, parasites, and also contains crystals of various salts, for instance oxalate, phosphate, urate, and amorphous salts. Sediment in and of itself requires no treatment. It is instead a symptom of another problem that may or may not be treatable. Sediment can be a practical problem for those who cath or use a Foley catheter. Sediment can clog the catheter, therefore rendering the catheter useless. In this case, frequent irrigations of the bladder through the catheter using sterile irrigation solution may reduce the amount of sediment. The proper procedure for flushing a Foley catheter is as follows. Number one, you want to protect yourself utilizing standard precautions when performing this procedure. This means washing your hands thoroughly before completing and also protecting any part of your body that may potentially become exposed to urine. So you need to utilize clean gloves. Number two, you need to explain the procedure to the client in full so they understand what's about to happen. Number three, assemble equipment, which includes a flush kit, sterile water, alcohol swabs, a towel, clean gloves, and the client's urinal. Four, pour sterile water, about 100 to 200 milliliters, into the solution sterile container located in the flush kit itself. Five, place the client in semi-reclining position with a towel underneath the catheter tubing or the buttocks if possible. Number six, Put on clean gloves. Seven, cleanse the junction of the catheter and the drainage tube bag thoroughly with the alcohol-soaked pad. Eight, carefully disconnect the tubing from the catheter and holding the catheter upright or else draining onto the towel. Nine, draw up approximately 30 to 50 mils of sterile water in the syringe and gently instill into the catheter. 10. Remove the syringe, position the catheter over their urinal, and allow draining by gravity, collecting irrigation return in the urinal. 11. Repeat the irrigation procedure until the debris is cleared from the lumen of the catheter. Note, if fluid fails to return, stop irrigation. An obstruction or an air pocket may be present. Try gently rotating the catheter in your fingers or turn the client from side to side to clear the catheter. 12. Cleanse the end of the catheter and the end of the bag tubing with the alcohol wipe. 13. Reconnect the catheter and the tubing. 14. Discard irrigation returns in the toilet. 15. Discard any unused irrigation solution that was poured into the container. And lastly, discard any soiled supplies in the trash. 
you want to complete a medical note stating that the procedure was performed and how much urine return was collected in the urinal. And also take note of how much sediment was present. When a Foley tube is disconnected from the drainage bag, this increases the risk of infection. So this is why we utilize aseptic technique when performing an irrigation, which includes sterile water and avoid touching the opening of the Foley tubing itself. We can attempt to restore the urine flow by inspecting the drainage system for any obstructions or by gently milking the tubing to clear possible blockage. And you always wanna squeeze and milk a tube towards the drainage bag and away from the body. You only want to irrigate a catheter if it's obstructed and as a last resort. Assess the possible cause of plugging. There could be a bladder infection or an inadequate fluid intake. It's important to push water. There could also be an alteration of pH in their urine. This is something that should be followed up with their primary care provider. Irrigation can damage the bladder mucosa, so we need to instill irrigation solution by gravity or only with gentle pressure. Use gravity drainage for the return of the irrigant only. Use a very gentle milking motion on the tubing if this method is used at all. The irrigant should be at room temperature and always use a sterile syringe included in the flush kit. No air should be injected with the solution. Never instill more than 30 to 50 mils at one time. And an order by the physician is required to irrigate a catheter, and it must include the type of irrigating solution, the amount of the solution, the time, and frequency of the irrigation. The first priority would be to contact a licensed personnel to perform this irrigation. So feel free to contact me via cell phone, by call or text message, or by email. If the blockage occurs after hours or the nurse is unavailable, you will utilize this training to be adequately qualified to perform this procedure.